it's uh, tonight is Monday, August 21st, 2023. Uh, we're here at the John Coverwood meeting room here at School Street. Uh, it's the Moortown Select Board, and so we'll first agenda item is uh, general public comments. So, is there anyone here, any folks here for general public comment? Or depends on what that is. <laughs> um, you just did you come in to what was your purpose here tonight? We were having a hard time getting a building permit. We're extremely frustrated. It's been uh, ongoing for over a year now, close to a year. Quite steadily for the last three, six months. Three to six months, yeah. Well, we can certainly take your, your name and information and um, look and see what the situation is and then get back to you. What is the change that you don't like? Frank, it's in the Pardon me? Frank and Cindy Bauer, B A R R. Where's the address uh, that you're putting in building here? 840 Brownsville Road. 841. 840 Brownsville Road, Morton. <clears throat> and you have. Um, you submitted your zoning app? It's a very long story. Yes, so we, the land was subdivided. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> it will take just to just give me a brief the overview. Brief thing, um, we tried to gift our daughter 10 acres of land to build a house on, and I tried to get a building permit because I heard it was transferable. I was told that. I couldn't do that because it would be a new parcel when I gave her the land. I would have to subdivide it first. So we hired a lawyer and had it subdivided. They recorded it at the town and we waited and we got a new parcel number. I again applied for a building permit and I was told that I couldn't have done that because I didn't get a subdivision permit. I didn't know I needed a subdivision permit. I hired a lawyer. He did all the work. He came here. They took our money. They recorded it. Yeah. Now, I have been denied my building permit because I didn't get a subdivision permit. And, and to meet the requirements of the permit application, she's requesting that I have an engineer survey my entire property. The 97 acres. The 97 acres. I'm not really sure where to go with what happened, but we have our parcel number, we have our curb cut, we have our 911 address, and she will not move forward on the building permit because I have not provided a map of the original parcel of land, which she requests that I hire a engineer to make this map. But to backtrack a bit, she also had requested us to do a waiver for the DRB to give her the authority to approve it, but yet she halted that as well. Like, so she doesn't have to approve that either. So we're just asking and stuff. We have no idea what to do. At this point, we've lost contractors. We, we can't even get the building loan because we don't have this permit. Right. Grandson doesn't know where he's going to go to school because. It's, it, it, I mean, we're out of the time here. I don't feel I should provide, I should have to hire an engineer to survey my land for a subdivision that's already done. Unless this town is going to take the land from my daughter and give it back to us and return all our money, I don't think I should have to have this guy survey my land. I think it's 
the outrageous that I would even if this hadn't happened. I'm trying to give my daughter 10 acres of land. I'm thousands of dollars into it now. All right, well certainly we can see your frustration. Um, this board has, um, has no authority as far as- I understand. Uh, doing the sort of zoning permits, but we, we do work with the zoning administrator. Um, she works for, for us. Um, so I'll, we'll take a look into it and she's really, she does a good job and she really, most generally, is really trying to find solutions for people. I, I, you know, I understand. For some reason she thinks we did this behind her back and she has this thing against us because of it. We, we didn't know we needed a zoning permit. Sure, I understand. We filed I mean, a subdivision she, permit. We filed her she direction. told me I needed to have it subdivided first. I went, I hired a lawyer, I had it subdivided. We waited for our parcel number, it came in the mail, and I read a lot. And then for her request, we put all of our names on it because now we truly aren't even the owners of the 10 acres. The kids are, so we had to put all four of our names on it. And it's still not meeting her satisfaction. All right, well, we will, uh, she's, she's back to work this week. She was on vacation last week. Um, we will, you know. Well, we, we, we can't talk to her anymore. No, we, we we're done with that. Yeah, she talks was, down to us like we're stupid. She threatens us, I'm all done with that. Yeah, today was really the last job that I just said I have to talk. So I called back here directly and said I don't want to talk to town. Then I was so they suggested we come here and express our frustration to you people. All right, well, we certainly hear it. Um, we'll look into it and we'll get in touch with you. Do um, you have a phone number? Can we Yep, 802 Okay, and we'll try to figure out what's going on and uh, maybe we want houses built in town, so. Uh, We'd like our kids to stay here, but they're getting a little frustrated too. Right. Well, thank you. I appreciate you yeah. the time to come in. Thank you. Excuse me, sir. Are you here for? Oh, I'm here for the six fifty. Oh, right. <laughs> I'm a little early. Yeah, be Mr. Helton. Yeah. All right. Anyone else for general public comments? I will run. Make sure I'm on the computer. All right, so if there's no further general public comments, we have CBRPC. We have Christian and hi. I'm Joyce. I'm Joyce, I know who you are, Joyce. I'm, are you? I'm the alternate to the CBRPC from Moortown. Um, they said it's in his way, so I'm here instead, and I'm just here to provide whatever, the connection between the town and the CBRPC. That's correct. Right. Joyce is our alternate commissioner along with David. Stapleton, uh, who's our commissioner, and then uh, we yeah, Joyce also serves on our transportation, regional transportation, transportation advisory committee. committee excuse me. Um, so we work through Joyce a lot, and hear hear news from Moortown often through our commissioners directly. Uh, but I want to introduce myself, Christian Meyer, executive director. I haven't been in the position all that long. I'm trying to make it around to all of our 23 municipalities. Say hi, and just reintroduce the organization as a whole. Um, founded in the 60s, our work focuses on land use planning, uh, transportation planning, um, or some of the other uh, natural resources, water quality, stormwater runoff, um, these, these sort of issues. Um, our mission is, and I'll, I'll read it so I get it right, is to assist member municipalities in providing effective local government and to work cooperatively with them to address regional issues. I think in practice what that means is we're kind of like a Swiss Army knife. You can pull us out when you need a little extra capacity as a municipality. Maybe it's for a grant application, maybe it's for grant administration or project administration. And then when the project's done, we continue on, on with our business. We don't go away, we still remember you, we know the projects, we take a little of that institutional memory with us. And hopefully it can help represent the municipality uh, in the future as, as, as opportunity arises. Um, some of the direct areas where we're providing technical assistance right now, we will help with municipal planning, uh, zoning, zoning updates and bylaws. Um, we help with the local hazard mitigation plans and the, and the uh, 
the local housing mitigation plan, then the emergency management. I'm forgetting the other ones, but the flood planning essentially we can help with that process. We have an emergency management planner on staff, so he can help out with all the grant funding a town might be searching, looking for, especially after an event like we all went through um, last month. Uh, we also have helped towns with uh, writing up capital improvement plans for their municipalities, and of course we provide uh, GIS services. Don't see any uh, CDRPC maps on the wall, maybe that one over there. There we go. <laughs> um, but we did, we, we, we did help print out those big scale maps for municipalities as needed. Um, some specific projects we've worked with in Moortown recently include 2022, we did the Bridge and Colbert inventory. This is a service we offer all municipalities. It's to keep that uh, inventory up to date and your, uh, your, your department, uh, your highways department can use it to identify where the undersized culverts might be or where the block culverts that need maintenance. Uh, usually I try to update that on the five-year cycle, it's getting a little out, out beyond that as, uh, as, as you know, we run into the same problem everyone has and make sure we have the staff to get out and do the field work. Uh, the stormwater project here, that's uh, where the administrative, where the administrative uh, partner on that project, handle, uh, handle money and make sure the contractors are getting paid. Um, obviously, my colleague uh, Claire Rock was a temporary zoning official in between hiring hiring uh, a permanent staff employee. Looking down the road, we have new demo maps coming out, and then we're going to retire, require all of our municipalities update their flood regulations to match those new maps, and we're already uh, in the process of identifying where that might need to happen for all the municipalities. So we've probably already taken a look at, at more town, and when those new maps come out, we'll be in touch camp to make sure that one gets incorporated. And uh, the residents and businesses in more town can continue to qualify for the NFIP program, which is the flood insurance program for uh, the federal government. Uh, so that's just a summary. I can go deeper if you have any questions, um, but the basic messages were, were here to offer extra capacity and help and uh, share our expertise uh, and share the regional expertise wherever we can. Well, thank you. Thank um, you. I guess right off, uh, zoning would be uh, something when I know Claire came in and, like I said, she helped us out mm -hmm. since uh, I think the summer here. Um, and we hired a great zoning administrator. Uh, however, she has um, started a new coffee business. Uh, that's taken off, so she is uh, getting done here. Uh, so we are going to be uh, searching for a new zoning administrator uh, and possibly may need a little bit of assistance uh, to the bridge again. Um, okay. Because if it's based on last time, it's, it's not yeah, an easy job to fill. No. Uh, the hours aren't there, but we, we did uh, increase the pay significantly to make sure we did. Oh, qualified so good. Uh, so we can help out in a couple of ways. Whether Claire will have the capacity at this point, we're also writing our regional plan right now, which is basically her project and it's a major lift. But certainly, we can talk more about that. There's also an opportunity potentially for a shared, um, shared position. We can work if there's more than one municipality. We can have a town staff essentially for more, who could serve more than one municipality um, that has been successful in some other parts of the state. Like assessors and some other smaller hour positions that don't quite make up a full time position. Now, is that something that you would employ the person? That is the agreement essentially. So, yeah, so it goes to you have three towns or two towns where it happens to be in the form of the That's right. right. That's right. 10 hours or 15 hours, they get the. They do 10 hours, right. 15, and then you might get a 30 hour or, a, or a full time position. Yeah. Right. I think there's a lot of opportunity in this region. I think a lot of our small municipalities could benefit from these kind of relationships. It's just we haven't had found a way to make it work yet. So uh, if you're interested in having that conversation, at least we can yeah, get into those waters and see what and we need to get the planning commission involved in this mm -hmm. as well. I think that is uh, something we would want to look at. What did she do? It's in the end of September, is there? Which is yes. Finishing up. Any other questions for Christian? Uh, well, thank you so much. Thank you. Very good. Enjoy so you're all set with uh, Christian. Good stuff. We're good. Good. Yes.
And thank you for your work. I know you've been working with uh, the committees, the safety committee. Is that what we are? Or well, whatever. We have a lot of names, but yeah, that's <laughs> We call you several different things depending on what day it is. Uh, <laughs> where we are. But I know that's coming along well, and you've been working on uh, speed uh, management at different parts of the town. So thank you. All right. Okay. Have a meeting in the morning. Yep. <clears throat> All right. Well, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Christian. All right, so moving on the agendas, uh, we have the library trustees. We have, uh, oh, okay. Is Denise here? Well, the historical oh, society. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we have the historical society at 635. So, um, yeah. Yeah. you guys want to roll your chairs up? Or? I, 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 Town resident about 10 years over on the border of Duxbury. Um, I'm 100 and I've been a trustee going, this is my sixth year as a trustee and also the secretary. So, um, and uh, you probably want to introduce yourself. Corey. <laughs> <laughs> library there. Anyone doesn't know Corey. Yet. August is my month to be at the select board meetings. Yay. So we, uh, we uh, wanted to share with you, we've been working um, as the library board and also with the director and also with the library friends and with some patrons to create our, our plan. Um, so I brought it to share with you and get your thoughts on it. Thank you. So um, the first page is a revision to our mission. So the mission was just pretty solid, but with um, time passing, we wanted to revisit it and really make sure that it was touching upon all of the aspects of the library that we wanted. So the mission of the More Town Memorial Library is an inclusive and vibrant gathering space for our community that provides access to robust programming, traditional and innovative materials and services. So we wanted to be sure right off the bat to, to share with you um, the the revised mission. And then the next few paragraphs just describe what our process was, that starting um, in October of 2022, a uh, subcommittee consisting of Elizabeth Mazzilli, the board chair, myself, and Corey, the director, met to begin a strategic planning process. And we were really uh, fortunate for our timing because the Vermont Department of Libraries provided two free trainings that started in the fall. Um, that was the asset-based community development training, and then I was able to attend a strategic planning training with Alliance Research, and um, those are both through the Department of Libraries. And Sasha, I just represent them as managing Sorry about that. Thank you. Um, and so during that, um, uh, during that, and with all the learning of that, what we were considering that with the library that it be determined that a three-year plan would, would work well for us. Uh, a traditional strategic plan that we learned is more of a five-year timeline and involves different steps that we felt were covered by other ways that we had done community engagement in 2018 in particular. And so we figured a bridge plan would get us from where we were in October to where we want to be in about three years. So that was one thing I wanted to make clear is that this would be the, a, a bridge plan, which is a little different than a full strategic plan that would go for maybe five or seven years. Um, so that was that was one piece. Does anyone have any questions about that part of it? Oh, just I think some of the thinking behind the bridge plan is there's a lot of flux right now with the space yeah. and the building and, wanting to see that sort of play out and play through. Uh, it seemed hard to say what would happen in five years, but three years mm -hmm. is a lot more doable. Yeah, so we followed the bridge plan process that was laid out in the training, and it would consist of this idea of a footing assessment and also this uh, TOES assessment, which the little footnote just says what those letters mean, and that the library staff, the board of trustees, the friends group, and some patrons participated in that. Um, I did such a share the, the electronic version of this so that you can look to see the links if you'd like to see what 
the the what those uh, the con what those assessments kind of drew out, um, and along with the past community engagement as well as the subcommittee findings, um, the toes matrix was taking a look at threats, opportunities, weaknesses, and strengths, and that really helped inform us to develop our focus areas, and that included our goals and our objectives. <coughs> And then also the revising of the mission that I already stated. And that we'll be revisiting this plan in our regular trustee meetings to determine measurements for success and also any sort of challenges or solutions as we go through the three-year process. Um, so, um, yeah, so then the next page just shows what those focus areas are. And we decided, I mean, for, for the library, this is like our first action plan. So we wanted to make it something that was that was truly doable. Um, I don't know if this is something that, you know, I don't want to go into too depth, but the idea of setting a SMART goal is that it's something that's specific and measurable and attainable, and we can set a timeline to it. So that's why we have in our focus area just two. So the first focus area is library infrastructure. And then the second one, well, you know what I never, my 11 year old was like, Mom, you should number all your pages on your doc. I'm sorry, I should have numbered the pages. Um, I'll make that edit. So on the, on the next page, you'll see focus area communication and outreach. Okay. So those are the two main focus areas. And then underneath them, we would have what the goal is, and then the objective, what we're aiming for, a timeline, and then who within our scope is, is responsible for that piece. So then in goal one, you'll notice that we have one, two, three. We try again, no more than four. That one actually has the four bullets. Then in, under goal two, that's um, working with library volunteers. That would be two bullets. And then under the, so you, you, you see the, the way it's, it's organized. Um, and then under communication and outreach, there are also two goals. So, one of our um, hopes was that we could, in focusing on our mission, draw out you know, what are the two focus areas that are kind of coming to the surface, what would be two goals under each focus area that we could actually do in the next three years. So in goal two, how are you going to store that database? Is that just like an Excel spreadsheet as new volunteers? Yeah, so I think one of the ideas is um, we rely on volunteers. And for a long time, it sort of just lived in the library director's head and sort of pull that out and create something that's more usable for all the staff. And um, I think one of the ultimate goals or one of the questions that has come up around volunteers is having the friends take a larger role in coordinating volunteers so that um, so that it's less of a, a job for me or Nicole to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we think of Google probably like the Google form. Like a Google form. Yeah. yeah. I have created a Google form for volunteers. Okay. Um, put it out on front porch form once. We need to get up on our website, but um, yeah, so. And that was one of the goals of the trustees was to coordinate with, with their director, but not have every single task in this bridge plan be something that Corey solely or Nicole solely would be doing. Right. So under responsibility, we'll see library director a lot, but we are also trying to layer in supports and, and um, you know, human, human efforts from the trustees, from the friends and um, different members of our board. Because that was one of our pieces that we wanted to, to, to have be in here. And I think our last official strategic plan was well before my time. I want to say 2010, but it might have been 2012. I know there was a collaborative strategic plan with the Madden Valley Libraries, but I don't believe more time participated. That one was in 2012. So. This has sort of been overdue for a little while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I mean, it's really like information sharing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 
It's a board you need to have a direction in the plan or not. Yeah. You're just a board. Yeah, wow. yeah, and we were really excited that we can have this be a part of also the goal setting. So we just had an evaluation with the trustees and with the director. And so like what kind of goals are we setting as a board, but also as a base to support our director too. And ways to collaborate. One of the things that came out of this was a strengthening of communication with stakeholders. So that's one of the reasons that we're here today is to is to really um, honor that and and just whether it's through emails or through coming to meetings or you know letting you know this or that's happening. So also strengthening communication between the library board and, and the select board. That that came up in a lot of our different assessment conversations. Yeah, and I think that's a good idea. Without taking too much of your time. <laughs> I went over this earlier, so I don't think I have any more questions. Well, and if anything comes up, obviously, you can chime in or reach out. I think this is uh, something good to work off, and I think we should probably get the board to spend some time looking at it, and maybe yeah, there are that's the questions that too. we may have. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they keep saying select board, so it looks like they're going to be on the schedule. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And we were really trying to think of a timeline. Oh, the way it's organized, you have the objective, the timeline, then the responsibility is, you know, we didn't want to say select board that without, you know, at least coming to the chair and planning you guys. Like, yeah. Yeah, so. Those are times to update, update the board. Yes, yeah. those are when we would be coming or the chair the treasurer right. right. yes. exactly. yeah. yeah again to really be really uh, intentional I guess is a word you could use or really specific about layering in that communication piece throughout right. so it's not like wait you guys have been talking about this for four years we're just hearing about it now like, we don't we don't want right. that like yeah. we started the process we came and talked to during the budget thing about budget proposal conversation around wanting to pursue strategic planning because we were able to tap into some resources that were provided free through the Vermont Department of Libraries. That was awesome. So we didn't want to, you know, we wanted to let you know where we kind of got with that work since October. One thing, like, too, is um, where does the, you talk with the friends of the, the, the library, um, you know, I hear that, I don't know who that is or what it is or what, you know, Really much about it, so that might be nice at some point to maybe have some time to. All right, this is what we are. This is what we do, and this is what our mission is. Oh yeah. Well, they're having a meeting tomorrow, so I'll be giving an update, and I could just ask if they'd be willing to to come in and to one of the meetings, public comment or whatever. Yeah, maybe just to figure yeah. out. I mean, friends groups are pretty standard for libraries yeah. around the state and the country, uh, but I'm sure they'd be happy to come talk to you more about what they're doing. They're newly revitalized, you know, when I first started. There's just a few members left, kind of getting some stuff done, but it's a really robust group now, so they probably have a lot to share with you. That'd be great. <coughs> Any other questions or concerns, folks? Anyone online with any questions? All right, well, thanks for your time. Okay. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Appreciate you taking the time and putting this together. Yeah, thanks yeah. for keeping us in the loop. Yeah. Good job. Thank you. Yes, thank you for that. <clears throat> All right, our next agenda item is the Historical Society. We've got some historical. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, what do we got tonight? Okay. Um, We've been in touch with the uh, library trustees about the uh, possibility of using the downstairs in the old library building. Yeah. Um, and we understood that uh, they, the, the trustees did a payback to the town for a portion of the lighting and the heating. I don't know. probably did. <laughs> Okay, well, um... What is that? Is that... Uh, I can chime in, too, if you want. 
Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Um, the, just we have line items for electricity and heat over there, so it's part of the library budget right now. <clears throat> well, that's what we understood was that the library trustees paid back the town for, for a portion. And we were wondering if you would consider, if we did um, do this with using the, the downstairs of the library, if you would waive that fee for us? All right. So, so, um, so you, the fee that you're talking about is the heating fee, or I mean not the heating fee, the, the heating cost, or? Heating electricity. Heating electricity you're looking to have us pick up. Um, what does it run per year, Corey? Do you know? Since we have an occupant space, I really I couldn't say without looking it up. Um, Plus things have changed. So we, we, we considered if it were uh, numbers <coughs> from 2019, they wouldn't necessarily be accurate for right. 2023. It's not going to be on yeah, according to Allison, um, she gave us a little printout, and it was um, roughly a hundred dollars a month on average. Yeah, on average. All right. And so, what do you, what do you, uh, folks want to do there? Well, um, we would like to display our our collection, um, have a <laughs> have a. Um, an area where we could do um, have people coming to do research, um, perhaps have the uh, maybe one or two mornings a week, just so people could could know that we're still out there. Sure, no, I think it's and come and see stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. And yeah. as far as the uh, trustees, or the, the library trustees, Jen, you guys are fine with. The historical society using that space. So we just started having those conversations. It's, so it's kind of in the planning yeah. stages. Okay. Yeah. So I know that it's on our next agenda for us because Allison had met with you and talked to you and had more questions for our board, but we haven't had our our monthly meeting yet. So we're still in the conversation step of the process mm -hmm. for sure. Why? Well, I mean, or speak up if you feel differently, but um, I, I, we would support you um, in that endeavor. Um, okay. Why don't you go ahead and continue working with the trustees, and we'll see, you know, where that comes out. But you know, we work with them. You know, we're it's, it's a town library now. We move them in there. I hope that uh, there's some space up there for them to mm -hmm. occupy. Um, and then we're going to figure out cost. And, I think it is a benefit mm -hmm. to everyone and look at the history. I know I always enjoy at the Norfest where you set up and you have displays. It's, fun to, it's nice to see that stuff. So if it's available year round, um, I think it will benefit all. Are you thinking of like having like it kind of exhibits that rotate or? Mm -hmm. like, oh, well, right do, you have enough, <laughs> do you have enough material? <laughs> or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we have the space, we can invite more activity. We okay. haven't had space. Yeah, exactly. Speakers yeah. come, we could have, you know, smaller groups there and uh, awaken the more town history. That would be great. I think that would be awesome. Yeah, I wholeheartedly support <laughs> And I, I'm Robin Campbell. I, I sent you guys an email. I know I tried to commit, reach out to you guys, so mm -hmm. I am the liaison to the Slack board. So if you want to send me emails about your progress, feel free to, if I can help in any way. On, Websites or whatever you guys think. It's a wonderful idea. I've been waiting a long time for this. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. 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 Just don't go in it, John. They might keep you there. <laughs> piece of history. <laughs> Living history. Living history. Living history. <laughs> All right. So is that, is that good for you? Thank you very much. Yep. Thank, you. Thank you, ladies. All right, Denise, Mary, Carolyn, and Ellen. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Force. Thank you. Nice to yeah. see you. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. All right, so we have um, Bobby Helpin road access for ATV slash UTVs. Bobby, yes. Why don't you pull the chair on up? I can do that. I know Ms. Um, Callie here has. 
I've talked to Kathy. Worked into that. And so we, we got a bear with me. That's all right. Well, we're pretty informal. Yeah. 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 I want to run for this one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, uh, we yeah. all treat everyone uh, as humans and respect, and that's pretty much it. Yeah. yeah. And uh, welcome. Thank you for coming. Um, my name is uh, so we'll introduce ourselves. So you probably don't know the rest of us. I'm Tom uh, Martin. Uh, John Holmgren. Yep. John Waxler. No. What? Bradley? No. No. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I'm Robin Campbell. I'm Cali's neighbor. Oh, okay. So, yeah. And our, Sasha is our assistant who works uh, as assistant treasurer as well. Okay. So she's kind of our, if you have things to send to the board, send it to her and she'll send it out to everybody. And where, where do you live in town? I live over on the other side of the mountain, uh, Tarts Road. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. How long have you have long have you lived there? Oh uh, 2018, 19 What's your feeling on Blinking Sign? The one at the top of the here? <laughs> it's definitely weird. It threw me off the first time I drove over the hill. Oh, what's that? But <laughs> the amount of trucks that actually go over and turn around. Yeah. yeah. It really is. Yeah. Is it really? Yeah. I mean, you'll set up the I, I can set up the deck, and you just all of a sudden it's like, oh, it's not going to make it. <laughs> and then a couple minutes later, it's headed back the other way. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. So, and they still drive by it. It's just like the launch. I mean, there's a million signs on there. I know. They're still getting stuff up. They got it up on the interstate now. Yeah. Yeah, like that. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But, like they have traffic cameras, yeah, they just have one that like if the truck goes by, like it runs yeah, like, a couple miles before and somebody runs yeah, out some sign. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Big <laughs> gate comes down. <laughs> so you are you're uh, an ATV? I am yeah, like just all that off-road Jeeps, I mean everything. But what I'm trying to do is a lot of towns in Vermont, yeah, they open up their dirt roads to ATV access. And you have to set time frames on it, you know, follow this the state rules of like May 1st to we'll say November 1st and a lot of towns are doing a trail pass if you would you come down pay a fee of something and you know you sign a piece of paper and you keep that piece of paper with you while you're in the town on their roads and the town keeps that money you have to still follow the state rules where you're registered and sure helmets and belts you know the normal rules but and I'm just looking to get access from like my house to say I go over towards Cali's house or over Jonesbrook, just you know, on the dirt roads. It wouldn't be a year-round thing. You can't do that because high you know, class four roads close. It's right. May first. Uh, yeah. I forget what they when they oh, when they yeah. close is like November fourteenth, I think, or December fourteenth. But I would cut it before that because you don't want stuff on when you're small. You know, you want to close it before hunting season. I would think that's what a lot of towns do. Um, you know, I think it's... But it's just um, class three and four roads? Yeah, class three and four. So dirt roads, town roads, like this route behind me is not a town road. That's right. So it would be like Moortown Mountain, Commons, Jonesbrook, you know, Stevensbrook, Payton, Payton, or head of town line, unless Duxbury decided. And I'm not really familiar with over your way. Well, like House so, Road and all those things. Yeah, it'd be like House Road, you know, just the, and then the class four roads. And you know, you have to do it like a town would have to put a curfew on it, so it would be able to say like eight AM to nine PM. That's what a lot of the towns are doing, like Johnson, Eden, Mole, Montgomery, all of those places we ride, you have to actually get a town pass. Some places do stickers, some places do you know, written things yep. like sign. And once you stop down the town, you just you get the thing and now is there if you went out now on your rig and wanted to come to, to Cali's or into town um, on okay. dirt road, oh, is there someone out there stopping you or no. but say a neighbor or somebody complained, they could. You know, I could get the hundred dollar ticket. Right. And is there anybody stopping me now? Not really. But if we made it legal, now there's 
I don't feel like I'm, oh, I gotta get going, or I'm right. doing something illegal, or the potential to get caught, get in trouble, or whatever, you know what I'm saying? I'd rather do it the right way. It's easier to do it. No, I understand. Uh, How would so, you go hunting you from where you want to go to the River Road, Jones, Brook area? Is that it? Go through the class form that goes over to Devil the Devil Bowl, or? Okay, Devil Bowl, or? You got a pass right down there. How long is that? No, you to go oh, Chandler oh. Road, Chandler's to the... No, it's that one by, I call it Almost Pond. It's the yeah, that's fine. Right. There's the road that passed through, and that's how people during the flood, they actually got out of their house. You know, I know some people that actually, they were stuck there, so they took their Jeep. And that's how they got out. From what road? What was it? It's in North Town Mountain. More time out. I don't know the name of the road. But it's, uh, there's no, it, no road so there. There's a legal trail that it's, does connect from Moore Town Mountain to Herringbrook yeah. Road. Is that what, you're talk, what they're talking about? Yeah. Moore Town yeah. Mountain Road yeah. to Herringbrook Road? Yes. Yeah. I didn't know that would be even possible. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's possible. Oh, yeah. no, yeah. That's the Sean rides his dirt bike work. That's how it goes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. You got the big side when it comes down. Okay. Yeah. So that was my, that's my thought. I mean, so I just would rather do it the legal way versus, you know, doing it the illegal way. So sometimes, yeah. uh, from what I've read, sometimes have specific roads that can be used. They right. don't open all the roads. Yeah, you wouldn't want to open, we'll just no, say, I'm just saying all of them. You start with, this process is like, it moves up. So you start with a little bit, you gain a little bit, say a club starts up, Okay. And then the club joins Vasa, Vasa comes in, then Vasa is actually willing to help out with some of the class four road repairs, they split costs with the town. I mean, this is way about me, but I'm just going with the steps of it. So you have to start with a little bit, and then you, it works its way up because, I mean, side by side in northern Vermont is picking up unbelievable. I mean, they're driving through Newport right now. I mean, I've taken my side by side right down the road south of the stoplight into Carter's. And yeah. Go down the gas station and yeah, you get can, gas. You do the same in Sheffield. It's registered. It's registered. You you would have to be registered. Like what we're talking about, you would have to follow Vermont state laws, which are the vehicle is registered, it's insured. You know, you have to wear the proper helmet for what grade you're driving and seat belts. It would be. I mean, that wouldn't be on the town anyway. That's the state laws to operate a ATV anyway. Right. It's just a matter of the road access would be on the town. And the rest of it is. Do you actually have a physical plate? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. All right. And then when you go the next step further, it'd be VASA. So actually, like snowmobiles, they got the VASA club. They got VASA, which is an ATV. And they do a bunch of, they get with landowners just like VASA does. And they make trails and connect them and go to towns. Like Roxbury has a bunch over there. Roxbury, yeah. Brookfield. Uh, Brookfield I yeah, Brookfield's got a bunch. And we go over there by the ride, but... So here in town, what would be... Because, uh, I mean, to me, I'm trying to think of what's the road to nowhere, where you're going to go. So yeah. what, what was, if we were going to start, what's an, a, an obvious place to begin and end? Okay. You know, because we're just putting in... I mean, if, we want to go. if you wanted to start somewhere, I would probably start with, like, Moortown Mountain, the common, then Herringbrook. You're on there, you're on, I don't know the name. Right. Right. They Jones Road or, uh, and that connector. Yeah. And you start there, see how it goes. I would always do it on a trial. A lot of towns will do it for like a one year trial. I, I've talked to residents on, on Herringbrook itself. There's going to be a huge amount of pushback on that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I so that's going to be a problem yeah. on that yeah. end, I know. Yeah. I so, talked to Sandra and Clayton, and they're against it. I've talked to uh, the other. Leo, the property guy, he's against it. Um, Leo has actually run people off of the road on there and caused accidents with people. So no. with <laughs> ATVs, I, I thought really deep. with ATVs, you mean? Or I yes. really yeah, yeah, no, I, that's what I mean. Yes, I mean, he, there's I mean, he has personally run our friends off the road, yeah, flipped on their side. Definite pushback. Because he, will, I mean, he's yeah. almost run me off the road walking my dog. So that I see that as being problematic. I, I don't. I mean, at least to me. I mean, if I'm going to represent the people, the residents of my community, then yeah. everybody I talked to, they were like, "Well, will you?" They weren't even signing my petition if I didn't come out against it. 
Yeah. So if I can just ask a question. Like the last oh, really? Yeah. Go ahead, Tom. Well, the last three years we've you know, we've had discussions that have been talking about the use of the trails in that zone that that you and Ray were working on and there was concern maybe some of it was trucks driving up in there. But yeah. I know that it's been if you were trucks driving up there. Yeah. It's and big, so it's I know that, that and that's a problem because it's the, the trails are getting all dug up and you yeah. guys are trying I remember you and Ray were trying to come up with some solution. I, I don't know if that so I don't know how that ties in with with this use or how the two uses live yeah. together. Yeah. Because yeah. that's why the neighbors there probably freaked out. Yeah, it's it's the loud trucks that go by right. anywhere from ten to three, four, five o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean I know I'm <laughs> my property is on both sides. Yeah. So, so she gets I hear sense. them on both yeah. ends. And a lot of it is trucks. It's I mean the amount of I you, maybe see four side by sides and four wheelers yeah. up there. I don't think you're going to see like an influx. What you're going to see, honestly, is people are doing it. People down. are doing it down. You're, going to, you're just doing it legally now. That's what yeah. you're doing. So if they're not coming to you complaining now, I mean, nobody's going to flock to Morktown and drive over Morktown Mountain Road. They're going, to go to, they're going to go to Newport where they can drive down the main road. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. going to be more, honestly, for the local people. And I mean, we don't have a spot to park and unload. It's not like, it's, it's more would be for local people. Yeah. You know, just drive and, you know, there is ways around the whole thing. I mean, I've done a lot of research with people out there in the world, or in the U.S., that you can actually make a side-by-side -side street legal, and then I can drive it right down Main Street. Do right. you get stopped a lot? Yeah, you do. But it is legal, and you have to sit there and prove all the paperwork. Right. But, you know, it's, you know, there is ways around everything, but you're just, you're just trying to make things legal. You know what I'm saying? And right. do things right. And, you know, open it up for the, you know, we'll just say the house boys, you know, and they get older, they want to go for a ride, want to go with him, come back. And they're doing it legally, you know what I'm saying? Instead of just, you know. I mean, you I mean I've done it myself. I'm not going to have been on the road. And, yeah, I, I've and done it myself, too. I'm just, <laughs> I've done it where it's legal, and you're just like, oh, this is so much, you know, no stress. You don't worry about the neighbor calling in, going, hey, the neighbor over here, calling in. They don't have any cops won't do anything anyway, but it's right. just one of those, if it's legal, people can't complain about it. And the community is totally different. Like when we go up to Sheffield for a ride up there, I mean, all the cars are waving at you when you drive. I mean, you're driving down the main roads. We actually ended up taking the wrong turn and ending up in Danville going by the Corn Maze, which is where we were not supposed to be. But you know, we turned around and came back, but people are still, you know, they wave to you, everyone is respectful, you stop the stop signs, you go. Yeah. And again, it's if if this was gonna connect to maybe Northfield. Eventually. I mean you gotta start to small. more people, but yeah. we're not. Is it not legal to drive a UTV on class four road as, <coughs> as it is? Right now. No, right now it's actually legal on class four. It's legal it's, on class four. It, so it's legal really on class four, about, but you can't get there. Right. You're really talking about Allowing them on class three dirt roads. Yes, yeah. and, and two. No. I don't know what two would no, be. It would only be three because it would only be a dirt road. No pay. Okay. I mean, I don't know the town roads. Okay. They'll go to Morgan, I know the mountain road and Stevens Brook Road, but I don't know Cali's Way. I don't know. Like, I don't know what there is for roads over there. The it's only thing more. you would have Hog Hollow, you would have Jones Brook Road from. Stacy's from the line up past, it doesn't go all the way up. So you really got Wardbrook, Jones Road, which Jones Road is a dead end road anyway, yeah. Lynch Hill, it's private and that's, too. that's it. Jones Road is not private. None of it is? Oh. The town hall is Oh, I thought it was private mm -hmm. after that. But the biggest thing here is you have to put, you know, dates. On it so that it starts. We'll just say you don't want them out there month season, so you have to do like say May 1st, May 15th, whatever the you know time frame is when the class four is open to when the class four is closed. <clears throat> That's a big key right there. And then I would do a curfew as well. That's what they did in Johnson, and it worked really good. That way nobody's be bopping around at midnight, one o'clock in the morning. So you just pretty much do it while the sun's up. So it's you can do it like hunting season, 30 minutes. 
after sunset. I mean, it, that way people aren't ripping up and down the roads at one o'clock in the morning. Hey, I thought they would anyway, but Ray has a comment he'd like to make. Ray, yeah. So you know, I I. I'm really in support of this. I've just, uh, again, I've been trying to push this for a long time. And the snag has always been the enforcement part of this. Um, how are how are you going to enforce, who's going to enforce this, and how, how is it going to be done as far as uh, if you have a tag for Moortown, let's say, um, and you're out, you're out riding, like I'm up on, I live on Jones Brook. I'm on Herring Brook a lot. Um, if I see somebody up there without a tag, I mean, who who is enforcing that? Who's going to be enforcing that? Have you got that far? I mean, who's enforcing it right now? There is no, there is no enforcement now. Right. Who's enforcing? Uh, it? That's what. That's that. I mean, people ride now, as you say, illegally, but there's no enforcement. Right. So, if they're riding illegally now. And the, you got to take it, like I said, in steps. So it's going to start with road access. And then I'm going to guess that probably in time, a club would start like Vass does, like you've got different clubs. And then it's going to move into Vass up, I would say. I'm just going on a guess right now. And then when it gets into the Vass estate itself, and they create more trails that are on private property via the landowners like Vass, is then Vassa actually supports the the game wardens and the, we'll just say Washington County sheriffs, they have a funding for that that they put out. But in the beginning, there would be no more enforcement than there is now. I mean, I don't know. There's the sheriff goes over the hill once in a while, but I don't know if he's ever stopped anybody. I've never seen him. So we've had, I think the state police was in here and they, they just said they're really not interested in stopping. Yeah, and the, the game warden actually has the most jurisdiction, but whether they I mean, there's not enough of them, but the I mean, the, the biggest thing is, is people are doing it now illegally. If we made it at least legal and the town made a little bit of money off of it, and it might self and, you know, enforce itself, you know, like if you see somebody doing something dumb, you take your license plate, you call it in, go to the town, be like, hey, I saw so-and-so down the road doing this. Here's this. They will have, like, if they're illegal, they won't have a license plate. They won't have a license plate. I mean, what you do. When they come into the town, all it would be would be a printed piece of paper that they sign saying that they are uh, registered legal in the state of Vermont, they have insurance, and that they know the Vermont state laws, and that they paid their whatever it is, we'll just say $20 to the town, and that would be on their person. They'd have to stay in their rig. And if somebody stopped them, all it would be was, I need your, I need your town permit, and they'd have, you'd have to hand it to them. So it's like you, you're having license. just like your hunting license. I mean, it's, um, I mean, it, it's just a, this would be just a small step to get to the bigger where we could actually get, you know, the VASA, the, the enforcement, just like they do on the snowmobile trails where they do checkpoints and stuff like that. And they do them here and there, but even on a snowmobile, I'll only see one, we'll just say one cop a year. And I ride you know, 1,000, 1,500 miles a year and I only get stopped once out of that. And most of it is just, Honestly, social media now, who's doing this, who's doing that? And they catch a lot of people doing stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, then the other thing I forgot to throw in there is the speed limit. You would have to put a speed limit like every other town, 25 on the roads. That would be, they, 25, on the edge, right below there. On the speed limit signs. It's O, O, E, T, R, V, I think it says, and that's 25. So, you're not doing the actual speed limit. So there's a lot of, I mean, a lot of little rules, but it just makes it safe for whatever we have to do. Yeah, um, this is something we can look into. In other towns um, incorporated, it was it town-wide roads, or was it, do you know how, how it actually happened in other towns? I think they did the vote. Don't quote me. Yes, I don't. Um, I think they did a vote. Some towns have done it on a trial basis, where they open it up for We'll just say six months, see how it goes, and then they decide after six months, is it good, is it bad, did it really do anything? I mean, in all honesty, people are doing it now in more towns, so they're just doing it and nobody, I mean, people might complain, yeah. but. All right, you're, gonna, you're never going to make everyone happy. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. we're going to be, no matter what we do here, or whatever. The biggest thing I've learned about this
this whole side-by-side -side snowmobiling thing, or whatever. If you're doing it legal, people aren't complaining about that. When I'm in my side-by-side -side and I go by the road, you know, the neighbor, he calls the cops. It's because I'm doing it illegal. He actually has a legitimate complaint. Mm -hmm. But if I'm doing it legally, Respecting the law. And I'm respecting and I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. He has no complaint because I'm actually doing it legally. Right. But I'm doing it illegally. He actually has a fair complaint. You know, I'm, I'm doing what I'm not supposed to do. And, you that's, know, that's so right. that's my. You're right. Um, well, Cali is certainly you have a, an interest in that. This is one of your um, things that you get excited about. About um, so why don't we? move this forward, I think, I like the idea of um, we're going to do something, do something on a temporary basis mm -hmm. to see if it works. So can you do some research into other towns? Um, nice as far as, really good. Um, all that up on, so. you know, how their processes have worked, where, how they've been incorporated, how, how these trial bases work, yeah. as far as whether it's, how do we do that to be legal, if you will? How do you do a legal trial? Right. And so the second thing is you can, we'll get together, but we can call like what I did before I came to the meeting is I called the Bassett president and he told me kind of like how the other towns go about it and he can make some suggestions. That is that right? No, he just got done, but the other guy, they just took it over, so I talked to him. He's the head trail master and I talked with him and he was the one that told me how the towns do all their things and how some towns do the trial, some towns do the votes, and he's very, very, very knowledgeable how it works with all the class four roads if they end up coming in, and he was the one that gave me all that information. So why don't we um, put a timeline that we have enough information to make a, a decision before town meeting so that we can go to the town meeting, that's where we have most of our, our people to come. Yeah. Say, all right, this is, and this is if this board decides to do it. I mean, after you get all that information, we'll have to just, you know, go through it as a board and vote as a board. And if, if we think that is something we want to move forward on a, on a temporary basis, um, and then we can present that at the town meeting and say, look, if we've, because of the information we've received from uh, Mr. Halpin, we went into this uh, discovery mode. This is what we found. This is what, and you may, which I doubt it, but you may after doing all your work, say, you know what, I don't really think this is good for our town. And, and I, like I said, it's unlikely you're, you're advocating for it. Uh, so I'm not expecting that, but who knows? I mean, I expect you to give us all the good and the bad. Yeah. Um, make this, so we can make an informed decision. So then that way we can present it to our rest of the town. Yeah. Um, Does anyone know off the top of their head like approximately what percent of our roads are paved versus, I mean, yeah, I mean, we're really talking about opening up 90% of the roads to the town to ATVs. No. <laughs> No, I was roads. I was, I was, you can name roads. A lot of towns okay, say, okay. All right. get the roads that they want. Okay, okay. Yeah. That's what I will do instead of robbing, instead of making. <laughs> like, oh, no, I think just look at No, that's fine. I'm just instead just of making those decisions, then. that's what I want. Cal yeah. to come back with, like, yeah. with a plan. Yeah. You can't get there. And then we can say, yeah, we go. We'd like to pick these seven roads to do on a trial basis or something and see how so we have, have an idea. Get an idea, get feedback from the neighbors. And, and, and this way, if we're doing it like this, yeah. we're not, there's not a lot of uncertainty in people's heads. And like, all yeah. of a sudden, they hear in this meeting and say, hey, more towns are on the roads. No, right. No. Okay. Right now, we're putting a plan together to see if it makes feasible to do a limited trial, trial basis for the town um, meeting so people. And, could make a decision. And I like yeah. that. Picking the roads, because like Dickerson Road, nobody's going to drive over about up back then. And yeah. Now go, you know what I'm saying? Or I just want to irritate you on. Right. <laughs> we have actually, it looks like a guy's cousin from there on somewhere. Like, this guy on the video, no, I think this is Yeah, because we do. There's a lot of roads that we have that are really, yeah, right. we could open up just a few and really enhance, right. you know, the whole area to. Yeah. I mean, so I would. I would definitely on board with that for sure. The mountain, her way. Yeah. There's the least amount of houses I would say on the Morgan Mountain Road, 
like when did you go yeah. over? Yeah. And you know. Chase, we couldn't do Chase Road because of Berlin. That's Berlin. Berlin. Yep, so, so you can't, you, so you, you can't, can't go there right, 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 yeah. So that stops like, what? We're also going to be nice pass. to know, too, when we're, we're right. making this decision. Is, is, is how many people, right. how many people are doing it now? Right. Because, if, you know, it would just be nice to be able to say to help at the point, you know, there's 40 people doing it and even now we don't want to do this. So that would be a good read. So try to find that out. What we've got the people that are doing it now. I know. What would our good friend Ray uses yeah. his, his on the on the road? So there's at least. I mean, two I know road. I know about two or three on. Yeah. My brush right. probably like six or seven on the mountain road. Right. And some of them are just the local farmer. There's some his little ranger going down to his garden. Yeah. Right. Technically, he's illegal, but yeah. Who's going to call the farmer and just go and burn his house? Not the farmer, the homeowner. Yeah. To his little garden. No one. You know. It's comment stuff. You know, I just had a question, sort of to Ray's point, and, and do you think, because you know, you're still going to get the people who are, you know, doing it illegally, didn't register, aren't with the, registered with the state, yep. don't have their papers or whatever. So, how do we, how do you deal with that? I mean, the the, the people who are doing it correctly, do they go to that person and say, "Hey, man, you're going to ruin it for everybody"? Yeah. Or, that's actually you how you police yourselves. They police also. themselves, yeah. Because as Ray, Ray was saying, he sees people up there with unregistered vehicles all the time. Yeah. No, you're, they're self-police. Like if, we'll just say Callie and I are at, we're out riding around, and all of a sudden there's some kids that, you know, hey, you're going to ruin it for the rest of them. You say something to them, and you're like, it just, that's the way it is, you know. And so a lot of people will be like, oh, yeah, you're right. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's no different than a snowmobile going off trail. If I see it, I go, hey, you know, you're going to ruin it. We're going to lose this land. For all of us, because you're going out here doing something, mm -hmm. and I mean, a lot of people, social media will do it too. I mean, they it self policing itself a lot more than that's what I would have. I think the tenant and the team and or whoever talked to us about it, so there's a lot of self awareness within mm -hmm. the groups of people it to is. try to keep it alive. Um, I mean, we all know there's people that are live outside of those limits, but I mean, there's always going to be one. I mean, I hate to say it, but yeah. you know, yeah. but I think your normal, like your group, I can think of where I live, there's like six in a circle, and we all kind of just go house to house to house. And that's kind of, it's, if I want to go up the road, that's where I get yelled at. But, you know, it's, people are doing it. I've talked to a lot of people in the town, and I'm like, yeah, it'd be awesome, I could just go down the road. And, All right, so, well, what it sounds mean? like you're, you right. talk? Well, what do you mean by social media or something? So if someone's doing something stupid. So there's a lot of pages out there like uh, Roxbury, we'll just, I'll use Roxbury for example. They have, uh, I think it's Lost Nation ATV Club. It's part of, you know, everybody joins it on Facebook and you look at it, you can see, hey, there was some garbage thrown here. If you see people, we put cameras up here because somebody's putting garbage here. Oh, I and okay. just so you know, it's kind of like a self-police, like when, this will be a start, and then it goes to a club, channel, and then it goes to Bass, and then it'll self-police itself. Like, hey, somebody's doing donuts in the, the turnout up here. All you do is put on social media. There's a camera up there now, we're gonna catch it. And magically it stops. And there'll be a president, and then all of a sudden, you know, mm -hmm. it does stop. There's mm -hmm. somebody that takes short control of it, you know? So. All right, so you guys good? So you got a plan? Yeah. Sounds like a plan. All right. Perfect. Thank you. What a bad first meeting. You might have to take us all for a ride. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, we're glad to do that. We can take you off for a little crew. Sean, Sean, bring you. Yeah, you. Sean, bring you. All right. Thank we're you. He's here. All right. All right. <laughs> all right. So let's go ahead and move on, folks. We've got reports and communications. Sasha, we're going to start with you. Um, no. The RFP, where do you guys? Say again? RFP. All right, so this, um, I'll go into this right now. Uh, I spoke with um, Cheryl Lynn after our last meeting um, and to see if there was any kind of FEMA assistance out there for uh, help with the projects. Kind of a um, clerk of the works or um, someone to do paperwork. Our last meeting, Martin was in here, and he sounded to me like uh, overwhelmed a little bit. And uh, they've got a lot of stuff to do to get ready for winter. 
So I thought, you know what, let's, let's put an uh, RFP out um, for that position. Because with it, we check in the FEMA, um, you need three um, bids. And so we were able to get three bids, I think, or at least we solicited three bids. I'm not sure how many we, we did receive. Um, and so, anyways, we, I just had to have her do that in, in this time frame. I just wanted to get something done and also um, kind of really, you know, cover our butts to make sure that there's nothing being missed. Um, because one little miss would cost us thousands of dollars. So let's go ahead and uh, pay someone to oversee that process, if you will. And they cover that, too. Okay. Yes, and they, and they will yeah. pay for that, They'll too. So that right. means so it's, 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 it's yeah. why wouldn't you do it? Yeah. Like um, they're going to pay for the the umpire. <laughs> like, so we did get three three bids in. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start with Stantec. Um, okay. There's gives us. spend some time going through these um, the way they're split out they have different service rates for um, each person who might be working on the projects um, and it goes from 142 an hour to uh, 225 so that's stand time um, we have Du Bois and King um, hourly rates from 85 to 225. Who, which was the next one? I'm sorry. That's Du Bois and King. Okay. King. Then we have One Point uh, Engineering and Consulting. Um, On Point. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> uh, On Point, not one. On. On Point. <laughs> that's what I said, right? No, it's just one. Oh, one point. One point. I'm sorry, Ray. One point. See, a lot of times I do these things to check on you, see if you really are paying attention or not. Because we're looking for people paying attention to detail. Um, and so Ray comes in with a, a $70 an hour, uh, which includes the uh, travel mileage. So my um, suggestion to the, the board would be that um, we, we take a look through these to make sure that um, everything is covered uh, to the RFP that we we're looking for. Uh, and if so, we go with the lowest bid uh, of on point. Um, and if not, if it's not covering uh, everything that we've asked for, then we'll move on uh, to the next lowest. What's everyone's thoughts on that? But I mean, that's so you'll send all that to us electronically, I guess, or, or how, how well, I think um, we're going to read. Actually, maybe if a couple people, uh, actually, maybe Sasha can make some uh, copies. Not tonight, um, but tomorrow, Don, maybe you can come and grab it. John, you can come and grab it, and um, I've done a little bit of reading through it, but I will. Then, if you can do it in the next couple of days, so we can get this up, get whoever on board. Right. Do we have an estimate of the number of hours at all? Or? I uh, no. There was no hour request. Can I say something? Okay, go ahead, Rick. Go ahead, Rick. There's a <clears throat> okay. So today there was one FEMA meeting, uh, and there's a very important one on Thursday at one thirty. So. I would guess you would want who's ever, whoever you decide to go with, it's gotta be on board for that. They have, they should attend this meeting. It's a, it's, um, you know, they're gonna be looking at sites. It's very critical. Who's ever gonna be doing the work to be at this meeting Thursday at 1.30. Yeah, that's a good point, right? Yeah. So tonight's Monday. 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 I was on this morning. Yeah, the 10 o'clock meeting. Yeah, yeah. I was driving, so I, I was in and out of it. Yeah, if we could 
the sooner we can do that, because I'm also headed to New Mexico on Thursday. John, do you ever stay in town? <laughs> <laughs> New Mexico, where were you? you were just in Montana. Montana. Yeah, yeah. Good for you. Yeah, yeah. nice. How about John? I would pick on the idea. I know a lot of years working in Montana, and never went anywhere. In Indian yeah. jewelry. <laughs> so will you two gentlemen be able to get this done tomorrow, take a look at these? Uh, sure. Yeah. All right, and then send me a, um, a text recommendation. Okay. And then um, we'll go with that. So we'll have the, the copy in the RFP. And you have a copy of everything. This, would this fit into race? Ray, would this fit into your schedule? I know you got a lot on your plate right now. I could fit it in my schedule, but, you know, I, I, there's a lot of these projects coming up, so right now, Moortown is my priority. Uh, so, yes, I can fit this in my schedule. Perfect. So, um, wait, so I, maybe I didn't understand. On, on point is, is you? <laughs> yes, it's Ray. It's Ray. Ray. Oh, you started a business. Yeah, he's doing the... Yeah. I didn't realize I yeah. thought he was yeah. doing it as Ray. I didn't realize no. he was that. No. He's on point. He's, a, he's, he's on one point. guy yeah. on point. Yeah. He's <laughs> one point. One, one <laughs> point. Actually, the name is confusing. Can we well, say I knew this on the stormwater. I didn't know he was got a gig now. Yeah. I, know. Know. I thought he retired, Brett. Yeah, he retired. Now he's just getting paid. He just got sick of who he was working for. Yeah. yeah. Now he's probably busier than he was. He's doing the same <laughs> thing he did before. Now he's just paid. Now he realizes how he's doing You know what they say? Uh, if you like what you do, it's not work. There you go. Um, so y'all good with that? Yeah. So I, so my uh, motion is what I said earlier. <laughs> Don't give me that. <laughs> you're, you're, you're gonna make a motion. You're gonna make a motion that John like and Don should decide this right now tonight, and it doesn't or or. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm... all right. Let's yeah. just go ahead. I'd move to accept Ray Washburn, uh, principal of On Point Engineering, um, who's responded to our RFP for assistance with the FEMA uh, for the months. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, there we go. Ray, we all set. Save you guys the trip. Thanks, Ray. Right, thank you. I'm going to send my resume to you, Ray. I know. If, hey, Greg, while you're right there, before you leave, can you give us an update on the current project? Sure. So, uh, you know, we've had to deal with a lot of rain, but uh, we have all the work, all the all the pipe work is in around the school and across the parking lot. Uh, the big item now is the, uh, the cleanup, which is extremely hard to do when it's mud. Uh, but uh, we're working on that. Uh, I expect uh, by Wednesday, by the end of this week, um, the school starts up next week. There's a lot of activity now. Officially, the school starts next week, I believe. Um, we'll be out of that area completely, uh, seeded, everything cleaned up. And then from there will be just the wetland area. Um, and that we were talking about the, uh, uh, the easement between the, the church and the Browns. Uh, right now, we have an easement. We have two easements that we thought were good, but the wording was really bad on the easements. So we thought the best solution was to have, and John Hogamoon was part of this, uh, we've asked Ron Shams to, to write uh, two more easements, clarifying that uh, the work that's being done this year which is uh, replacing the pipe that's there between the church uh, and the Browns, uh, basically lowering that pipe and adding two catch basements, catch basements in the easement area, which the town would be responsible for. And then the rest of the wetland area is on town property. Okay. And, and actually I got an uh, email from uh, Nick out of Ron's office. And um, he's going to be working on it, and so we, I, he, I gave him some times where he could reach me to talk about it. <coughs> but 
um, in talking with Howland, I, I think we're going to need more description than just um, from catch basin 11 to uh, you know the catch basin on 100B. I, I think we're going to have to have some pretty exact uh, locations because it will go on to Howland's ground, Howland's property. Right. Because, I mean, the, the culvert will be on, <coughs> will, the, the drainage pipe will be on church property. But we're looking at 10 feet on either side of that. So the 10 feet on the north side is going to get into Howland's property. Howland yeah. and, well, they were actually, I think the, 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 uh, the church is actually looking at giving some of that land to Howland anyways to square out his property. Right. On right. that end. Because I guess it's Yeah, it's just in the upper corner. So they're trying to square it off right. there. Um, and, <laughs> and and the the church is okay with proceeding um, before we actually have the easements done. But I I would guess I did not speak with Howland again. I left a message with him, but I would I would imagine that he probably would not want to do that. But he's a, he's in favor of the project. I'm sorry. He just, Howland Howland is in favor of the project. Yes, he is. You're right. Yeah. So, um, okay. So, how is this? So, if you're going to be in Montana. Is Ron Chems going to be sending this or Howland can take a look at what he has done? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that Tom can take over for it. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and deal with <clears throat> Nick. With Nick. Yeah. Okay. So we'll deal with that, John. I mean, Ray, and also with Howland. I think his, you know, I don't know if we talk to him, he's always been amenable. We look him in the eye and tell him what we're doing and what we want to take care of. Because I know he's going to want to hold up the project for a couple of weeks while we're waiting for the paperwork. For paperwork. Um, so I'll get on that tomorrow with both Howland and, and uh, Nick at um, Shem's office. I would appreciate it. I think that would be project. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, uh, doing that, and just when I was there, because I went and met with them on uh, the day that John couldn't on Monday or Tuesday of last week. It was a Friday. It was on Friday. A week ago, Friday. Yeah. But you couldn't be there. Is that the day I went? Yeah. Well, whatever, whatever day I went, we talked with how we are. We need to um, just prepare to. We're going to wipe out Howland's garden with a few plants and things like that. And I did tell him that we would replace those yeah. Um, yeah. or any of that stuff that we, we destroyed yeah. on his eye, his lands. So I just want everyone to, to know that. And there, there's not much. There's mulberry bushes or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing expensive, but just that we will yeah. take care of his yeah. property. It looks like it did before it was there, all right? Exactly. You know, you can't drive an excavator over it and go, well, you gave us an easement, you know. <laughs> you surprised with some people too, but does um, So we'll work on that. Yeah, and, yeah. The, and the only reason I, I said that, I shouldn't necessarily have said that about Howland, but I mean, I'm thinking more his lawyer. Very right. He's very, yeah. yeah. I mean, he, he's by the book yeah, and yeah. just, yeah. you know, crossing his T's and dots his eyes yeah. and uh, nothing against. That's and good stuff to have, but yeah. and they, we may be able to. And they are all in the paper. Yeah. Because yeah. it helps both of them. So. Yeah, yeah, it helps both of them. But, yeah. but it is tough to take it back if he changes his mind. <laughs> There's no easement yeah. there. So. Right, right. I can certainly understand. Right. All right, so okay. that's, um, so Sasha, we're still with you. I have an Arizona Missions, and it's just two properties that are owned by the same person. One was a business property and one the residential and one building was on the wrong one and it, it was just adjusted that way. Okay. And Sherilyn gave me a list of delinquent dogs and there are only three. And just letting you 
guys know about them? So. We um, make sure. I'll apologize in advance. Okay. Um, pass this on to Stefan sure. and he can follow up with these folks. Three, uh, three not, bad. not bad at all. The ones we know of, anyways. Uh, is that it, Sasha? Um, you said that you were going to touch back on freewheeling this meeting. Are you going to do that? Okay. I'll do that. Okay. Okay. Right. But you know what? Let's this week remind me to look in the budget to find something okay. about where we can. And while you're doing that, Right, so we have, remember when the Waterbury Ambulance Committee, I don't know if you were on the board or if you were, um, we agreed to $4,000. Uh, we initially were thinking um, FEMA funds, or that's where they came in looking for it. Um, but we all agreed to ARPA that. funds. Oh, ARPA. Okay, so okay. FEMA. FEMA. Yeah. Within the okay. kind of different beast. That was for what? Like the ambulance? Uh, yes, the Waterbury Ambulance. Oh, okay. And they were doing a capital project or something like that. Right, yeah. Um, so I will go through the budget this week or before our next meeting and have a recommendation where we can pull that $4,000 out as well. So we got both that and okay. freewheeling to kind of upper. How much was freewheeling for? Whether we give them? Or? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Um, I think they had asked for Twenty five hundred or five thousand or something like that. Was it that? Was it that? Yeah, right. Yeah, I think it was ten. Yeah. So. Uh, I have to look back no, you're, you're yeah. one hundred percent right. And yeah, they were asking for ten, so um, we certainly don't have ten thousand. But I, I think we could make a recommendation to them um, going forward is to actually get. I think they did last time is, is the, get the names, but if they get on with the, um, the budget request or the, uh, the articles. Right. So let the town, this is why I think the town should decide what yeah. like they uh, come to town meeting. Like they do, you know, like yeah. they do all yeah. of the yeah. ones like that. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, explain it that way too. And I think that would be the yeah. best way. And that way it's not $10,000 at once, but if they do right. it, it's five years. They can do a little research on their part. Here's yeah. the residents that we help, and you know. Yeah, no, I think they do um, more than yeah. what I initially right. thought, based on what I've yeah. seen of their stuff so. Um, next, next thing is the uh, tree. Yep. Yes, the tree. So apparently, the guy's not cutting the tree, right, John? Yeah, it's, he's not. He's, the tree hunter guy won't do the bit. Oh, he's moving. The tree hunter is not. He's moving. Ben's moving? That's what he said. Bummer. So he couldn't do it, but no, he's moving. So he might go down the list to the next. Jesus. So the next. next when, when, so when did you talk to him? Maybe I should it was right after. Right, 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 right after. Right after. Well, like I said, so, um, give him a call tomorrow, though. I will call him, but yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm surprised that he's moving. I mean, but how long is he going to move? house and what? I mean, how long does it take you to move? You move and you come back to the tree. Yeah, no, I don't know. Maybe he's moving on us. Okay, I'll call him. Okay. Oh, wow. I'd like to call him anyway. Yeah. Right. Call him. And then you also reached out to Snapping Turtle. Snapping Turtle. Right? And they haven't yeah, met yeah. back. But they were the next cheapest. Right, right. at 3000 3000 so, And I think it would be cheaper because we were asking for less of the work that was quoted. Um, right, you were going to. Well, we would, we, would hope, we would hope so. So I don't think we never really specified, right? We just said cut the, cut the tree. So, yeah. And I know I know that um, a tree works probably is is for the whole thing. You better be at that price. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I think that's what they charge to dig the pine tree now. They try to think it out. vine. Um, but at any rate, um, I, if if snapping turtle will come down, that would be. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, because I think they've been included chipping it and get rid of the yeah. crusher going to Right, so if they can get them to re-bid it or not even drop it. it. Tell them just drop it and charge us <laughs> this much. And, yeah, drop so it in those little clothes. Right. Yeah. Okay. 
down to 2,000 and just drop it. Yeah. But I would suggest. I mean, no, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll call them in the morning. Like, okay. Okay. I haven't seen a lot. Yeah. Um, Sherilyn is asking about, she wanted me to bring up the security. Um, she had somebody else that was going to come and look at the situation here, but they got wiped out by the flood. Um, she's concerned about losing the grant. Um, I did get three references from the security company, actually right from the businesses that use the security company. All right. And they're all very happy with them. Um, is there anyone else that can we always try to look at three people at least. Uh, can you find anyone else that might be interested in okay. taking a look? And, um, that we can... I think it's, we've got the grant. I think we should do We have the grant, yeah. Um, but let's make sure we follow the okay. policies. Yep. This is like for putting cameras. This is the cameras, so, yeah. Yep. They did outside. The guy came, Mike or whatever, came in and did the whole presentation. Yeah, no, I think there were two. Those cameras. Was it a buzzer on the door, or that wasn't part of it? No, that was. That wasn't part of it because that was like more expensive or something. Yeah. Basically, just cameras and monitor. And then my last thing is um, camping on the Route Two. Oh yeah, that's turned into a regular uh, camping area. No, there's at least five, or maybe yeah. five or more tents. A number of tents. They didn't mow it though. State mow it. The they state mow it, but yeah. They, oh, the state mow it in the exact camp. Well, they moved. They, yeah, they did a bad job, but they, everybody, all the tents now have moved into the woods. Well, I'm just. Are these like the same people, or, or are these people that might have been displaced by the flood? I. Who knows? Yeah. I mean, there's somebody under the bridge across from the cemetery in Montpelier mm -hmm. that have been there for a couple of days and the yeah. Montpelier police aren't doing anything about it. Right. So I don't know. There's also another camp out at uh, the River Road where we just had the paving done. Somebody's tucked in at the, uh, somebody is tucked in the little tent area where the pull-off is just before the uh, River Road Bridge uh, exits out to 100B. They had little tiki lights and all kinds of shit out there last night. That little pull-off is the first the little, the little pull-off, right? Yeah. Right at the end of River, yeah. River Road meets 100 B. Yeah, there was yeah. a trailer at one point there. Uh, well, well, it's not a trailer good. now. It's a, it was a regular tent with a canopy, you know, a pop-up sure. canopy and little tiki lights. And I went over and visited the one on the I thought it was just maybe somebody pulled off and have a little party, but they were, you know, they were, still, they were still there after the day. So, so uh, I was assuming... I called uh, our state rep, and she was following up on it. Um, yeah, I, mean, I don't know what our alternatives are. It's, you know, it's difficult. You know, there's no one to, to really enforce anything. Yeah. Um, and quite frankly, everyone that you call on it, you know, you know, you're right like asking about that guy, you know, right? Yeah. yeah. Like the, the, way, you know, say, please say, what, you know, what do you want to hear about it? Yeah. You, you know, well, I, I'm sorry. It's, you know. so, so yeah, I, I, I just wanted to bring it to everyone's attention. I don't know what this I mean, is. No, I mean, we've, got a, we've got someone over that way that's complaining. You know, the people are going down and knocking on the doors. You know, trying to use Wi-Fi. You know, want Wi-Fi passwords. Um, Concerns are that of, um, where are they going to the bathroom? Yeah, there's yeah, a lot of health fans, concerns. Yeah. Health, there's yeah. a lot of concerns, I just don't know. Yeah, it's, it's exactly. What do, you do? what do you do about it? Well, if it's a health concern, then it's your health office. Oh, no, I know. It's yeah, but we don't, yeah, we don't so. even send somebody over there saying, you know, <laughs> you can't check the woods. It seems to be common sense. <laughs> right. I mean, they're, you know, you want to enforce something. I mean, that's a, that's a way to enforce it. Uh, we don't even have the, the muscle to right. enforce it. No one has the wherewithal to the heart, the heart, yeah, the lack of their other or what to um, start knocking. You know, yeah. you know, everyone wants to turn 
turn their head the other way. You know how winter's coming. Yeah, winter coming, yeah. and it's it does affect other people. I mean, it, it, does. it is true. I mean, you, you know, so I, I feel, and I feel for the people that have to live in the day. I tent. feel people. I feel a great deal you know, for the people that have to live spend, in the tent. Can you imagine being in a tent all summer? I I know my wife's been homeless before, so I empathize considerably. Oh, I don't think people know what it's like to no, be no. living in the back of a camper and have to be out by daylight and you know. Stuff or, like that, but so. are they people who are displaced and yeah, who because knows? they're knocking on doors trying to get Wi-Fi, they can't get the services they need. Yeah, who knows? So do they need someone like? the help officer because we don't know where they're going to the bathroom to go down and just kind of ask and try to figure it out because they need help then you know they can direct them help support them get them options to try to yeah. get the support they need but then there are the people who don't want the help and right. want yeah, to be homeless living nomadically going wherever yeah, it's so, it's a, like yeah, it's it's tough. I don't know the answer. Right. I, I wouldn't send anyone there, but the state police to remove them. And I'm sure if you call the state police, they'd probably say we got we got better things to do today. Yeah. Someone was murdered. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know. So, you'd send the health officer by himself. No, you would, I, no, you would never. I would never send anybody down to confront oh. that situation. I think we need. I need to press Dara a little bit more, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, this is this is above us as a town. Definitely. Um, they need some, these people need help. Yeah. Um, and it's just above us, but you know, we also need to look out for our, our yeah. The yeah. people who live nearby. Yeah. People, people who are responsible for it, if you will. Um, and I just don't, you know, I've got an email from this woman. Well, what are you going to do? What are you doing? I don't know. We're doing everything. Uh, you know, yeah, you know, we, we, we're doing everything in our power. That's all you want. That should be the answer. Yeah. Right. We're doing everything in our power to alleviate, you know, to. And Tara, so she, she has gotten back with me a couple times. She reached out to actually another state rep in Waterbury to find out what they're doing. And they have a bunch of camp going on in Waterbury yeah. as well. Different areas to get into it. And mm -hmm. Waterbury at this point is just turned the cheek. <coughs> not doing anything. Um, we took that into a lot of, you know. And, and Unless we have guidance from the state, I don't know what else we can do. Yeah, state yeah. property. So, yeah. State property. If no, state property. That's a totally different ballgame. Yeah. That's a totally different ballgame. Oh, yeah. No one wants to take ownership of it. Yeah. It is state property. District so, 6 yeah, yeah. does not. Yeah. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. District six. That is that the town of Orange or not the town? Safe property. They wouldn't mow it. <laughs> I mean, they, you know, they, there's no trimming. There's picnic tables down there that are cement and steel that are tilted over. Right now. It's, it's yeah. Okay. That's it. It'd be nice if they would just push everything into the river and start over. But, you know, um, I wonder so, who to go to above them because. In essence, the state will not help you if it's on town property or private property. Right. If it's on state property, though, they will do work with that. They will do cleanup from encampments and everything. But they have it in the past, the session, and through that. Maybe I didn't go high enough, I don't know, yeah. but maybe yeah. there are. Yeah, that's where Sarah can come in. Mm -hmm. I'll follow up with Dara again tomorrow and ask her or say, you know, you need to retire for a little or for someone else or yeah. something. Yeah. You know, you know, let's get the governor down here and take a walk and pick out with this place. Yeah. You know, give, some, uh, give us some resources, you know. So, you know you must have an outreach person. You know, some, you know. I'll see who's on yeah. the email that I have. There was somebody on an email that we were working with. Okay. And I'll see who it is. Yeah, that would be great to have a that up. And I don't know if it's because it's in a different district, if it's a different person or not, but they may be 
Let me have the idea of how, how it went on and do it in a way that it helps people know. Just passes the buck down to the, you know, the next town. I mean, that's, I don't know, we're looking for that. You know, we'd like to get people. And they may do that. Yeah. They may just say, Get the state to put a portal out in there. Go be here. Right? The state but, wants to let somebody in there and put a portal out in there and give them some place to take. Yeah. It's, it's password very, or whatever, you know. It's very sad. It is sad. Um, okay, Robin Smith, I'm just with you. Do you have anything that you want to uh, share? I would, I'd like to make a motion that if we approve the ACO uh, wording change that uh, Sasha sent us, it basically consolidated the term, because uh, we had that issue of on public or private property, not the owners. Change that wording to running at large. That covers a lot more simpler version of the same statement. So I make a motion we accept that. And you guys were going to get back to me on the next steps for the ACO. Okay, before you get a motion, I'll second. second. John, second. All in favor of the, uh, the motion? All right. All right. All right. Uh, that's it for me. I do, we do, I do have a condom station unit available that we bought at auction. I don't know if it's anything that the town, it's like a big fan air conditioning like thing that's for condensation that we bought at an auction. It would have to be installed at the firehouse or wherever we want this at the town garage. But if there's any interest in the town of looking at it or me bringing it over or whatever, I'm more than willing to do that. So I know condensation at yeah, no, that's, 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 could be a, I have a big condensation use, like a three fan unit. Does it sit on the... It's got to be plugged and all that. You know, there's plumbing yeah. involved and stuff like that. But it's a pretty good size unit. It's probably, you know, top half of that screen. Could you get the specs and maybe... Yeah, like, yeah I can have the specs and send them. Yeah, yeah send the I can send you a photo and this and that or whatever. Yeah. That'd be good. It. Yep. Does it hang or it sits on the ground? I don't know what it has for brackets, okay. to be honest with you. Like I said, we bought it at an auction. The price of it was like 700 We got it for like 7 bucks or something. So, I mean, it's a $1,000 piece of equipment. So people want to donate yeah, it to yeah, town yeah, for no, free. I think it's a little bigger problem, but let's look at it. Sure. Yeah. No, Nothing for me, no. Um, tell me about you. Big D? Uh, I'm pretty quiet tonight. I am trying to work on, well, I haven't started yet because I was showing on maybe this last week, but it's, you know, they, they, we had a risk management report from the, the uh, insurance folks or whatever. I can share on my email with everybody. But there's a couple of things for the town hall, fire extinguisher, step that need to be taken, and then there's some items for the town garage. So I was going to work on this and help with this and put on some art and there's a few concerns about eye protection and such. So just like you know, she needs that needs to get taken care of so we can keep on insurance. Yeah. Okay. No, that's good. 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 Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, yeah uh, whatever. I don't know why they I don't know why you they saw do that. Still, I know. They don't make Glasses, guards for those. For what? Drills. It's the drill one of the guys. Oh, yeah. yeah, the they drill press. They don't make for them, so you, in essence, wear safety You have to wear safety them. Do them, but apparently the insurance doesn't like that. So. <laughs> Maybe we can write up, you know, I'll talk to Mark and we can send a, a response yeah. back or something. Yeah. Show them a pair of safety glasses that hang on the drill. This is what we use. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Whenever someone uses it, this is what's put on it. Yeah. The days below. You can get plexiglass, everything now, can't you? <laughs> Screen, like you probably <laughs> have that. So you can probably have a little <laughs> clamp with a piece of plexiglass right in front of it. I don't like it. Oh, well. And then uh, tomorrow we have a, our transportation group, or whatever we are. We have yeah. a couple of different days we're meeting tomorrow. Well, speed demons. We have a uh, a letter that uh, Joyce Manchester and I have been working on a lot that hopefully after tomorrow's meeting we all get to discuss it, get some brainstorming, we'll be sending the board a draft. Right. 
because it comes through with a you know, it has to be approved by a select like board before it goes out to the V Trans Traffic Committee. Right. And so, that's the um, drop down, step down. Yeah, that's some room two. two and some 100B yeah. and two yeah. the village. And Great. Some, you know, speed and signage. And, you know, it'll be coming at you very shortly. Great. Good. We need that. We really yeah. do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, then there's a forest management meeting tomorrow afternoon as well. Yep. And, I'll be, and, and as far as another, tomorrow's a busy day for me, actually. Because we're also meeting, um, we have a town hall committee meeting, but one of the main things in the meeting is we're meeting with Sam Lash from, I Mer guess you, from Mer Mer well, about the Merck grant, but I don't know if that's what she, she's from Central Wild Regional Planning, I think, but this is that. Anyways, that's to go over what we're doing, what we're trying to do, what other buildings we could oh. do as well, like the town garage, just to go get it sort of in, in person and show what we're trying to do at the town hall. And so, we're, so that should be good. Thanks. Yeah. Jeez. That's all I got for today. Drink coffee and keep on going. Yeah, oh, good. Glad you told me that. <laughs> but, uh, and yeah, that's, I mean, the next thing we got is more fest, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, we have a meeting before then. I think we have a meeting. Mm -hmm. Do we yes. meet after Tuesday. later today? Tuesday after later. Mm -hmm. But Michelle is going to come in and give us an update on that today, about the inspection. You might just text me and ask me to report it for another month. Okay. Come on, Yeah, I think they were all good. They've got all sorts of, should be good. Uh, so I had um, a Zoom meeting with uh, Ken Rowley, Two Boys and King, on the across the street sidewalk, and uh, he's been doing a good job with the, the landowners. I guess it really hasn't been any any opposition. Uh, good. Um, and um, and then I also spoke with. Jerry, I went, I was going by Manners, and Jerry was getting the mail. Mm, so and go. he got somebody to stop once across the street. So I, I, I pulled in and, and to talk with him. Now, I thought that they had fixed the, um, where the, they put that culvert in on Route 100 near Maynard's, actually to, to one to the north of side and then the, the worst one to the south side. And I thought that they had fixed that last fall when, we, when you called them. Yeah. But I guess not. Which one or both? Both. Both, okay. I, mean, I thought I saw fresh pavement there. But I, and I thought it was a little better. I guess it's not better. So he actually called the governor's office and um, so to do something about it, so. <laughs> Sorry, you stopped, huh? <laughs> Are you sorry you stopped to see it? Yeah. <laughs> but part of the traffic slowing thing is addressing that too, because you, as you come uh, north on 100 and you get to the 40, slow 40, before the intersection of 100 and 100B, mm -hmm. in our, this letter that we'll be sending to you, is to, we're suggesting that it gets dropped to where it says 40 to 35, and then 30 before before uh, Campbell's on view, so that people can go to 30 before they go down past Baynards and down the hill into the village. Yeah. Because Which makes that's sense. a busy intersection yeah. and people are steaming through there at yeah. 40, 50. And, and they're still ending up in their yard. I mean, people, even, yeah, they even though the they increase yeah. the signage, even though they increase the signage, it's still not sufficient. And they go barreling by to go to Stowe. And they turn and, and then they turn they, yeah, they turn, turn around, around and, but I mean they turn around and, and you know really make a mess of work. Yeah. So, and you know it's just it's annoying. It, 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 yeah, it's annoying. It happens it happens too often. So um, he also mentioned and he's mentioned this before that he can't hear us. He says it's the same problem with Waitsville because the acoustics are so bad in there. So he said, the same well, he watches the meeting, so. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah. That's what you're talking about. Yeah, I'm oh, sorry, yes. 
And not live, but he watches them on the TV. On the TV. Yes. Yep. And, uh, yeah, sorry. Um, and so he, he suggested having you know, microphones or something, something to, to speak into. So just wanted to mention that. So I don't know if we got closer to the owl or, or I don't know what. I don't know. I had a hard time when I did find Zoom. Well, oh, yeah. Zoom is off. But Zoom that's not but that's not the G Orca G thing. Is yeah, I I watched uh, one of the Orca things and I didn't really have a hard time with it. See, so Zoom it should not be like that. I do Zoom all the time at work, and I can hear. And there's 500 of us on the thing sometimes, and you can hear whoever's talking as long as there's the, the other people shut down. Right. Yeah. Um, so let's look at this. You know, we should go, contact Butternut. What's that? Sorry. Remember, I said this, the, the guy who developed one of the people who, who, who developed this thing had, has a home here in Moortown. Remember, I mentioned a couple of months ago that I, when I met him, or I, I met him, I was told of him, I haven't met him personally, but I met someone who was friends with him, and asked him if he would come to a meeting and maybe help run us through it and get some feedback just for what, like, you're talking with everybody's talking about right now. You know, we have some issues. This guy is. I got a lot of issues with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I have his name written down somewhere in here, but I could reach out to him and see if he'd, you know, come to a little a meeting yeah. or a, a morning session or something, you know? Because there might be something we can get, to, whether it's cooking into that or this. It's not. If he was on Zoom, it's the owl. But if he's, 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 he's watching it on Zoom. TV, He's watching it on, so it's that box. I wonder if he has access to get into Orca when they put it on, because usually that is pretty good if it's not on the TV, so if they have access to listen to it that way instead of watching it. Does, sir, are you on Mad River TV? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so Orca, the reason the Orca is better, because they actually get into the Zoom. Is that what you're, you know, they're all in the Yeah. So they're picking up from the computer, but like you said, these guys are just. And it takes, I mean, when I do the minutes, it takes Orca five days to get them out, because I think they're going in and clearing yeah. everything up. So maybe that some sound piece with that has to do. The owl is totally different. If you're in a Zoom meeting in here, because I've done it, and I can barely hear what's going on. From the owl. Yeah. It's, it's bad. It's really bad. No, I've seen people in it because they were, you know. Yeah, you can't hear. So, but that's totally separate than watching it on TV, which is what right. made her. Yeah. Well, yeah, let's... And we can also, you know, send out something to Butternut and, and see if there's any, you know, thing that we, uh, you know, they must have learned of this that people have poor audio and maybe there's something that we can clip on or mm -hmm. so that all all avenues are getting the same the same thing. I'll reach out to the owl about hmm. that. All right. Well, um, any other old business? I mean, we've been hitting most things as we go along. I don't think so. Um, we have the select board minutes, minutes of... Uh, uh, actually, um, the Freeman Hill Corner, mm -hmm. is that something that our committee should be looking into? Yeah. Um, Since we're look, doing, looking at that whole area. Yeah, well, and that, in the letter, we did, trying to we did tell people we would follow up on right. that. Okay. And, and I think with that, John, that is um, something that we talked about maybe with the roads or things like that. And I went by it, and I think what happens in the state needs to do a little blasting. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to, I mean, it would be gazillions of dollars to move the road, oh, you know, yes. to, across the if you could even get an easement to do that. Right. But the state should be able to come in and blast the, the corner. corner, 
blast both sides and just bring it back a little bit. Whether it's blasting or chipping, whatever they well, do. The problem is that new house there. Yeah, but that <laughs> on the hill. That's for four yeah, oh, but, yeah, but that that is uh, that's after though. That's after. That's totally yeah. after. Because it almost comes out. Freeman Mill Road comes out. <clears throat> just the other day, I was looking at it again. Yeah, and they just need to blast back a little bit of those stuff. Right. That is, speaking of the house, that is a nice house. Looks like they're building there. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Who is building that? Sad to see it. I don't know. Do you know? Pretty he's down the road. Yeah. No, a little. Yeah. What's that? I think they're from Cowles. From Cowles. All right. Well, it's interesting on that corner. I went to bring Max to the vet maybe June and came around the corner by Freeman Hill and right in the field just past Freeman Hill there was a truck like. Perfectly. On its side, right in the field. So I don't know if they were coming in around right, through fast. there too fast. And I mean, there wasn't any skid marks or anything. Just, and the guy was sitting out. Usually you see him on the other side in the, in the cemetery. But uh, yeah. the, in that field below, I don't know. Yeah, they no, would do he, that. he was like down, like Freeman Hill is yeah. here and he's right here. Don't know. And since we're talking about that area, um, <clears throat> our neighbors there on Pony Farm, was, did we request that they don't park there just in the winter? Because now they, they have bought a, a, a new vehicle to replace the one with the broken <laughs> window. Same license plate, but a different vehicle, but it's like twice as long. So, so what I think we need to do um, we're going to invite them to a select board. Yeah, we can do that at some point. But I think we should have a line painted on that asphalt that's on, that's going up. Mm -hmm. So that would define where the road is. I mean, it's obviously to see where it is. And then bring them in here and say, look, it, you got to be three feet off that white line or that yellow line or whatever it right. is. Um, I've been by there many times, and it's it's not safe at all. No, mm -hmm. right. and and yeah, they have, and I don't. It takes some, you know. I, I just don't know what people are thinking that they just think they can park in the middle of the road all the time. Right. I mean, it's not once in a while. It's just we come down here, and they're just turning off the cars, and it's you know it's in the middle of the road, and it, you can't have that. Um, it's gonna someone's gonna get hurt there, whether it's a pedestrian walking around it. Or someone on their bicycle. Someone on their bicycle. No, it, right. it is a tough intersection, but. Yeah, yeah. All right, because you, you really do have to, you need all of that space, every yeah. bit of that space, to look back. back. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. yeah. But could, I mean, I, it would seem like it would, maybe we could just ask them to come to a meeting so we could all just talk to them and just, Say, hey, you know, we gotta, it's taking, we gotta work this out because it's dangerous. Otherwise, we're gonna have to stop. Well, I know, I think that's why if we draw a, 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 a line in the sand, if you will, so people know where, so, or maybe not, maybe just not the tar or whatever, but either way, they, they can't, there's not a lot of talking left. I mean, it's like you can't be on the road. And they did stop during the winter. So yeah, they did do that. And again, it's one of those things that you don't want to be a jerk, but uh, I mean, it's, I mean, sorry, but it's causing, it will cause uh, a problem for someone if it hasn't already. I mean, I've what, tried coming what seems from the other way. What seems to be their problem? They just don't they have, have the three, room. They don't have the room. They have for three, three cars. cars. Well, they, they can, they have, two cars. they have to back one out if somebody wants to. Right. So they try to right. So they probably put them. all three and one sticks out. No, not quite. I mean, okay, they can, well, they're they parked can, in the can, road. You can fit three vehicles okay. in that space, yes. but it's inconvenient. Yes. Okay. Maybe one of those, I mean, we don't need another sign, but you know, no parking in the travel lane. That's not what we see. That's what we see. Yeah, that is a typical sign. Yeah, you know, well, they got one over by Red Hen, you know. Yeah, no parking in the travel lane. Right. So, or even. Yeah, 
you know, I can maybe someday, maybe Don, maybe you and I can just take a walk by and knock on the door and say, you know, okay. talk to them. And just yeah. talk to them. I mean, yeah. Yeah, we don't want to be starting something or having someone think we're, you know, these jerks from the town or whatever. Yeah, right. yeah. But we just need to. We all got to live together. Yeah. Right. And just. And, Understand we don't want to wait till someone gets killed to right. like have it become, you know, right? Like, then it would be really, big problem. yeah, exactly. It was a bicycler, you know. Actually, I, I might buy there a lot, I'll, yeah. I'll look to see someone there. Yeah, someone's not stopping. I'll stop and just say what you know, we've had, and yeah, okay, there's no way. And then, you know, and then if they we'll see how, yeah, it, see goes. how it goes, yeah. Yeah. and just if that doesn't work, then we'll go to plan B. Right. No, right? I mean, okay. That makes sense. I mean, yeah. I think it's, it's trying to be nice. Uh, anything else there, John? That we should, no, I guess that's, that's it. We got, uh, we've talked to you about the condensation. We've got a new machine. That, so did you just buy stuff that's cheap at auctions, or did you have a use for that? Uh, we thought we had a use, and then we didn't. There. So it's sitting in a storage, it's sitting in a storage unit right now, and it's like the literally the last thing in the storage unit. So it's like keep paying, you know, <laughs> seventy five bucks a month, or we we'll bring it to the dump, and you know, it's a seven hundred dollar piece of it, you know, machinery. Yeah, so I why throw it in the dump, you know? So I could probably use it in my basement. Yeah, but it's pretty big unit. It's not like a little tiny thing. No, I'm just yeah. Any other new, any new business anyone wants to bring up or start? All right. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, approve the select board minutes from uh, the seventh of August, twenty twenty-three. I wasn't sure about the errors and omissions, but that's just stuff that kind of came up that we didn't talk about. Uh, actually, on page two, under the town hall. Yep. We have Tom made a motion to accept Corey's recommendation. There was never a second on that. I don't even know that we voted. Yeah, we did. We did? Yeah. Move on. It should show that. I didn't put it in there? No, it's not. No, it says Tom made the motion to accept Corey's recommendation. Oh, but no one second. I think else. I think I second. Yeah, it's just like John. Yeah, we've all done Yeah, okay. I think it was announced. I didn't I didn't circle. Okay, no, nothing. I'll make a motion that we Set. approve the uh, minutes uh, with the amendment that uh, under the town hall that I seconded at Tom's mo motion and that we were all in favor. Second motion. Thank you. Uh, all in favor, go right. Aye. 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 All right, so we just, so should we have uh, just errors and omissions to sign? Yep, we're going to have some warrants and one overload. Okay. Yeah, we're going to have some errors and omissions to sign. Okay, everyone needs to do this. Overload is from uh, Josh Sherman. I'll see that in the second. John and Don signs. Oops, I did I sign one of them, but uh, this is payroll. What? Oh, I, I found it. Sasha, on page three. says um, Don advised the town hall design is moving into the next phase. 
Yeah. And the next one it says is a typographical survey. Topographical. 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 Thank you. Okay. Looks like you did some work for us on the uh, flood stuff. On the flood stuff? Yeah, like, yeah he was, uh, this was an invoice for 12000 Or 11000 Yeah, he's some auto Dogs. This one you didn't sign it looks like you were supposed to. Oh, was that? Uh, uh, by. Oh, which, uh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. John, enjoy your trip. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Home, you home base is going to be Taos. Really? Yeah. How long are you going? Nine days. Good for you. Yeah. All right. Taking some away. Yeah. Yeah. National yeah. Parks and Monuments. She won't win. My wife wants us to go to Mexico. That's what? We, my wife wants to go to Mexico. No, really? No. So I move to uh, adjourn. Second. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Kelly. Uh, all in favor, vote aye. 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 aye.